What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and welcome back to the channel. Now today we have the first big board of the year. It's still super early with tons of time for prospects to move up and down the board, but I feel like we have enough of a sample size to finally put something out that I can at least live with, even though it'll still likely change pretty quick. Due to the health crisis in the world right now, the college basketball prospects have only played about 4-8 to eight games depending on the health of their team and university. Some like Romeo Weems are still yet to play this season. I've seen a decent amount of the international guys, but not enough to be completely sure of their games, so there will definitely be a lot of movement from them as we move along in the year. Let's go ahead and get it started. Here's a group of some of the players who did not make the top 45 at this time, but are definitely still in consideration. There are many, many players who aren't on here, but are still on my radar. I just didn't feel like putting 50 people on the screen, so. Some of the more notable players here are guys like Luca Garza, Matthew Hurt, and Josh Giddy, among others. Like I said before, it takes me longer to get the international guys full games, so their rankings usually reflect lower earlier in the year. As always, we'll get more detailed and cover everybody as we get closer to the top of this list, so no, I didn't forget them if I didn't talk in depth about them. I just didn't want to put out a 40 minute video, so forgive me on that. Sandro Mamu Kelishvili is one of the more interesting prospects in this class. He's a senior out of Seton Hall, and with the graduation of Miles Powell, he's really shy in making big time plays for others and moving in ways we rarely see from 6'11 guys. I'd probably guess he creeps into first round consideration by draft time. His versatility is super intriguing, and as we get to see him more, I'll have a better grasp on him as a prospect. I guarantee he'll be a favorite of everyone who follows the draft. Ibu Baji is a tremendous athlete with upside as a rim runner and shot blocker. Rokas Jokubaitis, who you may recognize from playing against the Ball Brothers out in Lithuania, is an intriguing lefty guard. At 42, we have Joel Ayayi. He's the perfect example of someone being a star in their role on this Gonzaga squad. He's taken a back seat to Jalen Suggs and Andrew Nimhard in terms of ball handling responsibilities, but he still shined in numerous ways. Davion Mitchell out of Baylor has impressed me a ton so far this year. He's made drastic improvements as a shooter, and a combination of him and Jared Butler make up what is easily one of the best backcourts in the country. I haven't heard a lot of buzz around him, but I think his ability to affect the game on both ends of the floor, especially defensively, make him a solid prospect, even as an older player who's smaller in stature. At 39, we have DJ Stewart. I mentioned Stewart as one of the main guys to watch in my previous video, and I'm still pretty confident in his abilities. However, I want to see if the game starts to slow down for him more, and if he can impact it consistently outside of getting buckets as an undersized two guard. Romeo Weems is another guy in sort of a placeholder spot like Sharif Cooper. I like what I saw from him last year, but he's yet to play a game thus far. Hopefully he can get on the court soon so we can see what he looks like in an expanded role and what he's improved upon since last year. Delano Banton is another one of the few players I've been excited to watch. He's basically a 6'9 point guard as he's definitely at his best with the ball in his hands. He has great vision and a nice all around skill set. I wouldn't say this for everybody I have in this general range right now, but Banton has first round potential. How he performs against the likes of Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State is going to tell a lot about him as a player coming up. If you want more information on him right now, I recommend you go check out a video from my guy as sub me in coach. A link will be in the description. Scotty Lewis comes in at 37. Aaron Henry is one of the best defenders in this class. He has great physical tools and can definitely impact the game without being a particularly good scorer. Bones Highland is one of, if not the most entertaining player in college basketball this season. His ability to create shots and shoot it from distance is among the elite in this class. Although he's going to need to work on his body and overall decision making, he's elite on offense and has a true dog mentality. You might recognize him from this viral one on one video from a few years ago. At 33, we have Ron Harper Jr. He's pretty much set the world on fire so far this year. He has a nice all around game, and if he keeps shooting the ball anywhere near the way he has over these first six games, I think he definitely gets into the first round, especially if he can lose about 20 to 25 pounds. Miami's Earl Timberlake looked apart in his long awaited debut for the Hurricanes. I love what I saw from him as a passer on top of the obvious physical tools and intriguing two way potential. Isaiah Jackson is 31st. Now he does have high potential, but he still makes plenty of mental mistakes, especially defensively. On the bright side, he makes a lot of plays only a few players could even think about making, which is what makes him appealing as a prospect. Definitely want to see if he can be more consistent and cut back on the dumb fouls. Deuce McBride is another guy who I think has flown a bit under the radar so far. He's been really effective on both ends and plays with a lot of fire. 
Iro Desumu is at 29. He's done nothing but put up numbers. I like his game and think he's a bit underrated. However, I'm still pretty concerned with his inability to create separation and shots against aggressive defense and outside of the pick and roll. He shows flashes of a more creative handle and shot creating ability, but he still isn't confident enough to be counted on in that department. If he continues this level of play, I'd say he's a pretty safe bet in that late first to early second round range. Winding down this section at 28, we have Cam Thomas out of LSU who is an absolute bucket. He's done this on every level and it hasn't stopped in college. Trey Mann holds down the 27 spot who has rebounded after a rough freshman season. He was a McDonald's All-American coming into college. So far he's been great and looked a lot more like you would have projected coming out of high school. I think Mann has the potential to show and prove his way all the way into the late teens which isn't something I'd say for a lot of guys in this area. This Baylor team has been good enough that Jared Butler has sort of just been coasting so far this season. He's made a clear concerted effort to showcase that he can make plays for his teammates as that was a big question with him coming into the draft last year. Butler was a top 40 guy for me in 2020 and something drastic would have to happen for him to fall below this general area in this class. Now starting off this next section, we have Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Dayron Sharp. Greg Brown is a raw athletic prospect who looks like he's starting to catch on to the college game. There's a lot he still needs to work on, but his athletic ability and potential to play both inside and on the perimeter on both ends of the floor is a major positive. If he can shoot the three at a higher clip, and stop fouling so much as he's averaging nearly seven fouls a game per 40 minutes. He'll be in the mix for the top 20 for sure. Terrence Shannon Jr. is 22nd. He's a super left-handed wing who is a good athlete and plays with a lot of energy. His game is reminiscent of Kelly Oubre's in college, though he's a bit smaller and has more guard skills. Still have questions about him as a shooter, but if he's consistent and has a few more performances like the one against Kansas, I think he'll be a first rounder. And Zach is Corey Kispert is another guy who I had in that top 40 region last year before he decided to return to school. He's an elite shooter and a good defender with perfect size for a wing. I'm confident he'll be somewhere in the 20s area during draft time, even as a senior. At 20 we've got Jaden Springer, who is a super tough and physical guard out of Tennessee. He's one of two Tennessee freshmen who should make a lot of first round noise come draft day. I'm interested to see how he looks against tougher competition and if Rick Barnes ever plays him more than 20 minutes a night. Terrence Clark, along with the rest of this Kentucky team, has struggled all season long. He hasn't been awful, and the bright moments let you know that that lottery type guy is still in there, but it's just been rough. Even in a limited role as a freshman, David Johnson was definitely on mine and a lot of other people's radar. He's looked better across the board this season and has the physical tools and versatility to be a top 20 guy. At this point, I'd be surprised if he wasn't a first round pick. There are only a few players in college basketball that legitimately shock me on a consistent basis when they play, and Kai Jones is one of them. I think he's been a bit underutilized so far this year, but if he can consistently produce in this role like he has been, he'll make major first round noise. Now the last player in this section, at number 16, is Marcus Bagley out of Arizona State. He's the brother of the Kings Marvin Bagley. But Marcus wasn't this number one in his class type of prospect. I've been pleasantly surprised with his game at 6'8", and he can really shoot it in a variety of situations. He's got easy first round potential to me. Now we enter the top 15, starting with Josh Christopher. I was a bit skeptical of his game coming in, but he's pretty much delivered so far. Among other things, I really like the passion and fire that he plays with. He's a big time scoring two guard, who I think is a better shooter than the percentages show so far this year. The defensive potential is there, and he's shown flashes of having more to offer as a playmaker. Overall, I like his game, and think he'll be steadily in the mix as a late lottery to late teens guy. I badly need the G League Ignite full game footage to get a look at prospects like Deshaun Nix. I like what he brings to the table as a big playmaking guard, but if the outside shot and defensive tools don't improve, he might be a tough sell as a lottery pick, though I think he's a top 20 guy. The initial reports out of the Ignite scrimmages list those issues as still being quite evident, but I really want to get a detailed look for myself before I can definitively project him. Even after his first several games this season, I wasn't completely sure about him as a prospect, but that 40 point art exhibition against Creighton pretty much slammed the door on that. 
He has lottery potential as a rangy two guard. And in the worst case scenario, he still probably doesn't fall too far outside of the top 20. Ranked 12 is Zaire Williams, who has been solid even as he struggled from the field early in his career. He's a talented shot creator and at his size is going to really need to focus on finishing at the rim and he sort of reminds me of a young Brandon Ingram in that way as Ingram always faded, shied away from contact and played below the rim early on in his career. It'll bode well for him if he can better use his length and body as he continues to grow as a player. Outside the top 10 is BJ Boston who is another Kentucky Wildcat that has been a part of a really awful season. For him personally, he's looked decent overall with extremely high flashes. I'm interested to see how he and this team look throughout the season because Boston is talented enough to be a top 5-7 to seven prospect. I told you in the last video I wanted to see Moses Moody prove it, and he has so far, albeit against subpar competition. He's that 3 and D prospect every team wants and needs, and he's impressed me as an overall scorer more than I initially expected. He's locked in as a lottery guy at the moment. Usman Garuba is pretty easily the best international prospect in this class. He's a high impact forward or undersized center with loads of potential on both ends, but especially defensively. He's been a pro for years now and has done it at the highest levels with and against NBA level talent. When it's all said and done, he could easily find himself in the top seven as he continues to add to his skill set offensively. Keon Johnson is probably this year's Patrick Williams. If he was on a different team, he'd be able to better showcase what he can do, especially offensively. He's a tremendous athlete, and the potential for him as a player is really high. Number seven is Jalen Johnson, a 6'9 forward from Duke. He's currently hurt, but has shown enough to continue to warrant lottery consideration. His size and athleticism combined with a nice handle and playmaking ability are reminiscent of Ben Simmons. He's definitely not Simmons, but a Simmons like, especially in the way he rebounds and plays in transition. The last player in this section is Scotty Barnes, and you're not going to find a player possibly in the world more energetic and expressive than he is. He has one of the most unique skill sets in the class that allows him to affect the game in multiple ways. He's still raw and hasn't shot the ball well at all, but there have been several wow moments from him, especially defensively and as a passer. There's still a lot to like here, even with his shortcomings as a scorer. We've now entered the top five where I currently think the upper echelon of this class resides. There are a lot of differing opinions on Jalen Green as an NBA prospect, but it's really tough for me not to consider a player as offensively gifted and explosive as him in the top five of this class at this point. Now it's worth mentioning that he has major work to do defensively and in terms of effort, and he's got to do a better job of affecting the game when he's not scoring or his shot isn't falling. Whatever you think about a guy like Zach Levine or even Anthony Edwards last year likely applies here. I'm a borderline fiend for the G League footage at this point. I need it right now, so if you have it, just let a brother know. At number four, we have Jonathan Kaminga. I bet Kaminga is going to make his case for the number one pick by draft time next season. He's been physically ready for the league for a couple years now at 6'8", 220, and from what I've seen from him in scrimmages and open runs this summer to the few G League highlights, he's developing nicely. I can't wait to hopefully see more of him in the future. Evan Mobley is the best big prospect in this class. His length, fluidity, and overall skill set on both ends is really impressive. He's got about as much potential as anybody in this class, and I think once he gets into the league, his development is going to be fast-tracked, especially physically. He's a surefire top five pick to me. There hasn't been a player in college basketball this season that has put together as complete of games as Jalen Suggs. His combination of athleticism matched with a high IQ and a surprising level of confidence as a shot creator has placed him in the upper echelon of prospects in this class. He does have the luxury of playing with this Gonzaga squad full of future pros, but I think he's substantially the best traditional point guard prospect in the class at the moment. And finally, at number one, we have Cade Cunningham, who I believe to still be the number one guy. This Oklahoma State team is better than people are ever going to give them credit for, but for his game, the spacing and personnel can get quite clunky. Cade's ability on both ends has shined through, and I like how assertive he's been at times, even when it results in a turnover or a bad shot. There's still so much he can easily add to his game offensively, and at 6'8", 220, that makes him the number one prospect. That's going to do it for this video. I want to make it clear that these rankings are as fluid as they could possibly be, and it's extremely early, so just keep that in mind. Shout out to all of you who took the time to watch this video, and hopefully I put you on to a few players, entertained you, or at least helped you out in some form or fashion. 
Make sure to leave a comment down below of some of your favorite prospects in this class. And definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed. As always, it's Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and I'm out. It feels tremendous when I count this gram. It lowers my witness, I live everything I speak. When you see me out, I'm probably with Shy G. You gon' need more than an M to sign me.